Thank you. And good afternoon, everybody. Broadcasting to you live from the RV Falcor out here in the Coral Sea as we continue our voyage of discovery through the Coral Sea region where we've, in recent days, just travelled down from the north from our last uh, ROV deployment, which was out at Osprey Reef. We've travelled south uh, some, some distance. We're now sitting... 400 kilometres offshore from the city of Townsville in northeast Queensland, Australia. Today we have taken the ROV Sebastian down to a water depth of 312 metres, uh, located on the western margin of Togros Reef. So this is a very large reef system which sits out in the Coral Sea Marine Park. It uh, covers an area east to west of approximately 100 kilometres, north to south by 50 kilometres, so it's a very extensive reef system. We're going to get some insights into this system today by taking an ROV dive in relative shallow depths, starting at about 300 as you see, rising up to about 150 metres, perhaps a bit shallower if we can. So this is a continuation of our voyage of discovery uh, where we've been looking at the seamounts, canyons and reefs of the Coral Sea region, both the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park and the Coral Sea Marine Park. Today we're in the Coral Sea Marine Park. This is the largest of Australia's marine protected areas covering almost 1 million square kilometres in area. It's a vast area and our focus of course today and the next couple of days in fact will be on the shallow water reef systems in the outer waters of the Coral Sea Marine Park. So Sebastian's landed at 312 metres and in view for everybody we've got some in initial insights into our seabed character. We're just deploying the manipulator arms of the Sebastian coming in to get a closer look and perhaps collect a sample. Can we get that screen on? Yeah. So we're going to go for this, Jeremy? Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay. We have Jeremy Horowitz once again in the control room with us today. He's our resident black coral expert. Uh, and straight away he's asked us to collect this sample of... Parathopathies. Right, Thank you, Jeremy. Parathopathies. Uh, so the action kicks off straight away. And it's just we get a bit of a, a view of the, the site we've landed on here. Clearly uh, a rubbly, a regular seabed surface. In the foreground we've got a slightly raised area which is probably part of the reef limestone and off into the distance we can see a, a gravel gravelly sand seabed extending out onto the deeper area was it complete luck or did you see it you kind of went down to it i literally just turned it over there i want to land it so i mean i found it yeah, yeah. Yes. Welcome to everyone who's dialing in online uh, through Facebook and YouTube. A lot of familiar names coming up already. It's great to see everybody. Monday afternoon here in Australia. Weather conditions have got a bit breezy in the last two days. Uh, running about 20 knots, but still, still workable. Yeah. We're certainly going to take our time this afternoon. We've got all afternoon to traverse this transect. We fully expect there to be plenty of opportunities to stop and have a good look at things and collect representative samples of things that we are authorised to collect under our permit for the Coral Sea Park. That's right. You don't want it? You can try. 
see how much feed they have. Is this the uh, same one, Jeremy? I yeah. wasn't watching you. Okay. So this is the base of the parent of um, And If we can get the rest of it, it gives a bit more information on what the species is. Uh, but if we're unable to get it clean, then we'll just leave it. We got it clean. Water temperature presently 16.3 degrees Celsius in 312 meters water depth. 16.3. I'm not saying that was you, me. Anything else here, Jeremy, that you like the look of? I don't see anything of interest. Okay. Take a look around. Yeah, do we, I haven't got a sense of how hard the sea beat is quite yet. I'm sure it's pretty shallow. We'll just give it a bit of a poke. <laughs> pretty hard. Pretty firm. That's push ups. Push ups on the fast. <laughs> Sebastian's doing a little push up. <laughs> so we're not going to call that that, and that's absolutely fine. That's expected just to, just to confirm that. Perhaps off in the distance. Okay, well, we'll be off and have a bit of a look around, uh, get our bearings, as, just at the start of the dive here, of course. Seems like a lot of suitable habitat for corals and sponges to live on. Sure does, nice and nice firm substrate. Mm. So yeah, look, quite a lot of cobbly, bouldery, well, not bouldery, not that large, but cobbly material strewn across this surface. We've got Martin McNeil in the control room, uh, one of our coral reef experts from a geological point of view. She's just curious to know whether these might be rhodolith or even fossil rhodoliths. So what we'll do, we'll land, we'll land at a on this field of gravel here Adam and uh, collect one of these smaller manageable sized um, pebbles. pebbles, cobbles, cobble size I'd say. Lovely, yep thank you. They are round and surrican aren't they? Uh, we could check out what's here. You want to land up there? Is it okay to get a sample there? We'll do it certainly for that, but we might just grab a... Can we grab a rock here? Yeah, yeah, okay. Got a few of them. So it'll be interesting to see whether these are cemented into the platform or landed on or whether they're loose. It does look loose at this point. <laughs> some corals on there. And it is loose. Do you want it? Do you want to put it in two? That one's pretty identifiable, and if we go to full tools, it'll just fall to the bottom. Yeah. Yep. Just well, to save that. one B for yeah. a better, better sample. No, thanks. Good suggestion, Adam. Okay. So one of the things we can do is cut these in half. If we cut them in half and we see the inside of those concentric rings, then straight away we're probably thinking more likely uh, coralline red algae, like rhodoliths. Or it could just be coral rubble. But it just seems unusual to have a, a, field, a big, yeah, big field of these sort of similar sized uh, rock. Um, so cutting them in half back on board will be, you know, we'll be able to figure that out pretty quick. Welcome Rob Beeman to the commentary chair again this afternoon. Thanks Scott. Looking forward to a, a long, a, yeah, a leisurely a, dive. A leisurely <laughs> dive at the bottom of the Coral Sea. 
my favourite place to be. Excellent. Okay, we'll move over to those corals in the in the view there. Thanks, Adam. Because we have seen rhodolith beds here, but they're usually higher up on the uh, uh, in, towards the shallower coral reef, uh, and they're, they're, it's caused typically by strong currents. They uh, it's a rubble; it tends to roll around the currents, so pushing the these little uh, pebble-sized pieces around and around, and you get coralline algae growing on it, and eventually it builds up this, these concentric rings thick enough that, to the point where they they stop rolling, and you end up with these big fields of uh, like, like almost baseball size rocks, but they're, they're, it's actually uh, red algae that's caused it. So they're really interesting places, and uh, we know that they're around the edges of all of these uh, these shallower coral sea uh, reefs that we're we're exploring now. Nice. Yes, today's dive is on the northwestern tip of De Gros Reef. Yeah, or well, Diamond Islets is another also, name for it. So, known. I guess back then when they were naming these features, they were mainly looking for sand caves and the like. But in fact, we're on a very, very large bank. Um, it has a has an internal lagoon. Um, as Scott mentioned, it's it's quite large. It's about a hundred kilometres long at its longest point, and about fifty kilometres wide. Uh, we're not far from Lehau Reef, which is a, a similar, very large atoll, about a hundred kilometres long. We'll get there tomorrow, won't we? Uh, Wednesday. Wednesday, Wednesday next day. Yeah. Yeah. So these two atolls the Diamond Islets slash Trugos Reefs and Lehau Reef are in the top 20 largest atolls in the world. Just to give you uh, okay. such a scale, oh, they are very, massive. very big. And fully protected under the Australia's uh, National Network of Marine Protected Areas. That's right. In fact, Lehau, Lehau Reef, and Herald Herald Cays, further west of uh, northwest of us, were the two first areas to be protected under what was the regional Coral Sea Marine Park. It's now much ex more expanded. The Coral Sea Marine Park is about one million square kilometres. Um, so we're in quite a pristine part of the world here. What's this one we're collecting, Jeremy, right now? It's a soft coral. It's a sub coral. Soft, uh, co soft coral. Excuse me. Yeah, so it's an octo coral. Octo coral. Yep. And is this. Have you got an ID on it or you're, you're not uh, sure? Potentially. Yeah. We'll confirm when we, when we'll when grab we get it. it on board. Yep. Okay. Um, um, yeah, sure, quickly. Yeah. We get ooh and ah. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. Ah. <laughs> what are you looking at here? Well, since I'm not a soft coral expert, um, I just know that generally you need a close in view of the branching structure and the polyp structure. When you get it on, on the boat, it's never quite as clear. Um, it gets a bit messy, the tissue starts to, to break down, so um, being able to look at it here nice and, and really nice with a nice camera, you're able to see you know, the distance between polyps, uh, the number of rows of polyps, and generally the gross morphological structure. Uh, are the lasers on? They can be. Sure, let's throw them off. I mean, we don't need it for this best, but just generally. There you go. Okay. All right, we can put this in 1A. What's okay. going on? 
Murex Seed. Yeah, thanks. Seed. Happy for the ID. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit of a mouthful. Yeah, Paramura Seed. Um, so, the reason why we're collecting, one of the main reasons why we're collecting corals is to resolve these long standing taxonomic questions that we have. You know, how are species related? How are genera related? How are family? <laughs> How are families related? So this specimen, along with all the others we've collected, the almost almost 100 corals, um, are going to help us answer these questions. Uh, and we're, we really are finally going to answer these questions. We now have the techniques to answer them. All we really needed was fresh tissue. So this is just an amazing opportunity. Yeah, that's right. Just how hard it is to collect. So you know. You, to get out here, it's a long way out, over 400 kilometers off the Australian mainland. Uh, so you need a boat big enough to do that. And then typically you're only scuba diving, which is down maybe 20, 30 meters at the very most. So most of what we know about the Coral Sea Marine Park is just from scuba diving surveys down to those shallow depths. Mm. So this is very, very unique to be able to come down to these depths. And of course we're seeing lots and lots of corals um, in the, this twilight zone. So we're at the, we're at the lower mesophotic zone. And uh, Scott, would you say this, this is one of these big boulder blocks from an undersea landslide that we're started that's, on? That's the hint from the bathymetry we have, Rob, that this is definitely a, 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 an area of raised seabed topography. Not, not massive, probably 20 metres at very most. Ooh, so this is all about it's like a net. It's trying to validate net. that to some extent this afternoon, yeah. getting a sense of the relationship between the seabed down here and higher up as we get closer to the reef edge. So there's, we've, uh, we've previously been out here on the uh, earlier expedition in May, June, and we mapped all along this area. And in fact, one of the, the real characteristics of these 30 large coral reefs is there's a lot of landslide material. Mm. Big blocks have fallen off the edge. We assume they're, they're uh, limestone, you know, previously shallow limestone, and they've now fallen down the, the steeper flanks and, and are stranded at the base of, uh, of the steeper flanks. However, right now that's looking pretty in yeah. situ. Yeah, and we yeah, have, yeah. and one of the characters of these blocks is they're often, they look cast like, cast with a K. So they look like they they were previously exposed to air, and now they're broken off and they're down here. But they have these really great sculpted shapes and caves, and mm. uh, we've explored them previously in a couple of other dives that we did back in um, in May and June, and. Oh, you know, it's just like swimming over a cave environment. Check out these boulders here, Scott. Ah, these are, these are that's really that's interesting. interesting. Little, what's going on there? I wonder where the fish are. Is this an aggregation? You know, we we have seen places where we've got these piles of rotoliths, rotoliths in shallower oh, water, though. Oh, okay. Not shallow, and they were. Um, you know, we were speculating what might make them. One, a fish that we do know it makes does these is, things is Titan triggerfish. But they tend to be a much more shallower okay. animal. But they can pick up rocks this size in their mouth. They kind of hover like a helicopter and then drop them into a spot on the seafloor. They make these mounds. And uh, of course they nest inside them. And anybody, anybody who's swimming on the Great Barrier Reef, mainly in summertime, needs to keep a real close eye out for those fish because they, they can they, they can attack you. Mm. Yeah, but they make these piles of bolt, these rubble piles. That doesn't look natural to me. No, it does not. <laughs> As in a geomorphic sediment process, you're meaning? Yeah. Yeah, you can imagine a few, you know, rocks falling off the edge of this, but around. not yeah. on a big, big pile like that. We're seeing bed forms down here too. Yeah, a few so little ripples in the sand yeah. starting to come through. And most of it's a sort of a rubbly boulder area, but there's this soft sediment overlying it, and it's got this characteristic um, ribbing shape, and, and this is what we call bed forms. So you need 
currents to be able to create bed forms like that. Jeremy's just zooming into a point of interest coming up. There we go. We're seeing a lot of these parenthopathids. Um, when we see them, we see a lot of them. They kind of, you know, sparsely cover the seafloor, these ha kind of habitats. We saw a lot on, on leg one as well. There's other. It's important not to skip over the smaller things. Yeah. You know. Still heading to waypoint one on this transect, so that's, that's a good start. <laughs> we haven't really started. Oh, we yeah. started. Yeah, we yeah, have. You we, have. <laughs> we have. We have. We have. Yeah. yeah what do you think? Want? We have our standard 500 meter transects that we're doing on each one of these dives, and this is to allow us to do uh, a, a systematic comparison between all of these ARO dives, ROD dives across, across the Coral Sea Marine Park and inside the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park. Uh, it's very important when you, you're doing these uh, systematic transects that we're at the same height, same speed, um, and we're capturing still images every five seconds. Uh, and we have with us Alex uh, doing that analysis, doing that, um, I guess, coding, identifying the, the images, and also Stephanie. Uh, doing event logging, so anything of really that that is of importance, uh, of interest, we take specific photos and we can write text against each one of those photos, so they can be um, analysed post voyage. right on this black coral like isn't it Jeremy what do you think uh, the tentacles for that, for that fluffy look about it probably an octo coral oh, okay no. can okay. we set the white balance on the camera yeah there you yeah, go better. that's better yeah. So, yeah, this is certainly an octocoral. Um, okay, just wanted to check. We should also keep our eyes out for those small carnivorous sponges. Crawling there. Which would be something like the size of this here. But it's not. Which waypoint do we start? Which, which waypoint do we start? Okay, great. Sorry. All good. Shill over here. Okay. Yeah, yeah thanks. that's good. Thanks. On we go. Just about to put that up. Oh, you didn't want to sample that, did you? No. Oh, okay. Yeah. Put out the map, is it? Yeah. No. Okay, just on screen now we have the uh, the 3D perspective view of to Gross Reef. So we are in the foreground there, that, that little small point which comes out on the northwestern tip of the reef. And you can just make out our transect line there coming across the and we're just zooming into it. Yeah, so the Trigos Reefs is, uh, has these diamond islets as well. There's, there's four islets, uh, three of them with vegetation. Um, all the islets have lots of birds on them, like frigate birds and, and uh, boobies and the like. They, they both nest and feed in the offshore waters. Uh, one of the islets has a, a very tall lighthouse on it, which has a 
a 17 nautical mile range and that's really to to help mariners ships passing through this these waters to obviously avoid hitting the reef Ah, something coming up there in the yeah. bit more of a cluster of these. What do we got here? Uh, those are probably Stichopathies, uh, unbranched black corals. So, genus Stichopathies. Uh, they all seem to be the same color, probably the same species. We've collected a few of these. Uh -huh. um, I've been keeping an eye out for the other genus of unbranched. Uh, black corals. I haven't found any yet, which is surprising. Um, uh, no explanation why they are in GBR. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, what? Seropathies. Uh, but so keeping an eye out. corals in this area. You know, yeah. Anywhere you stop, you'll find small corals. Mm. Just a centimeter or two high. In yeah. some cases, yeah. 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 So we're about, a, what, a meter off the bottom at the moment. Yeah. Mm. But it's easy to miss even the small stuff. Yeah. Check out the bed forms here. They're living nice and right now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, It's yeah. interesting. We're at 300 meters and we're seeing what it looks to me. Yeah, quite fresh looking ripples. Yeah, like, these are active, no doubt about yeah, it. Yeah, see, I mean, the, the way to tell them apart is if you've got really sharp crests, anything that's yeah, kind of, ero you know, old, they become a lot more smoothed out. But these look um, pretty fresh bed forms, which is interesting at 300 metres depth. We might have a go at a push call, Adam. Yeah, just, yeah give it a go. We'll see. It may be a very thin veneer, but we need to learn. Let me put it in a photo like a nice... Jeremy. Kind of sandy spot. Thanks, mate. Yeah, good. This yeah. looks almost stylastic like to me. You know that? Yeah. We're in, within that zone. Yeah. This looks like lovely beach sand. Yeah, it does very clean. You know, compared to like the GBR, the Great Barrier Reef, the bottom of those canyons, which is yeah, that was very, very wall. muddy, wasn't it? We've changed gears since then. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, sediments, there's two things to think about. It's the source of the sediments and also the energy that uh, is affecting them. So the source here is directly related to the, the proximity to the, sh the shallow coral reef. So these will be calcareous sediments, limestone. But then if you're seeing bed forms at this depth, it means, it means that there's some current that can winnow out any finer material. So I, I think we're probably looking like a fine, like a fine to coarse calcareous yeah, sand. looks like it. Yeah, I think it's got very well sorted into these ripples. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, weather here is, is still quite pleasant. It's uh, it's definitely got windier in the last day. Yes, uh, I'm Yesterday getting, it got up around 25 knots. Yeah, as we're coming across. Yeah, yeah, we had quite a big transit last night and, you know, you could definitely feel the, the ship rocking around. But now we're on the, the leeward side of the reef. It's, it's quite still. The wind has dropped. Yep, we've got a good day for it. Yeah. Yet again. Very fortunate. Righto, we're going to try a push call through this sand and see. Yeah, we may just. Well, hit. one, how deep we go, and two, whether we can retain it. Yeah. That's the question. It's very, yeah, it's the sort of thing that falls out easily, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Maybe a scoop? You can also scoop. We'll, we'll go for scoop if this fails. There we go. It's going right there. It went a bit of a hard surface there, Chris. Yeah. That's, all I got right there. that's, that's as far as That's as far as it's going to go. Okay, yeah, so we'll right, call that a. Okay. That'll fall yeah. out, I'm sure of that. Yeah. Okay, well, um, We'll can that idea that was worth testing though but we'll, can we do a scoop or a bag whichever sure we the bag we use the bag just to... what's that oh the canvas bag we save that for cool stuff later on okay oh. we, can, we can do a scoop yeah a scoop yeah oh just scoop it with yeah 
Yeah, I can do it with this. Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Multi purpose. Do you want to target? Yeah. Yeah, potentially. Yeah. That's a great sample. Yeah, look at that. Really well sorted. A surface scrape will do. pilots this morning we've got uh, Chris on the manipulator arm and uh, with Adam next to him in assisted by Viet on the audio vision controls next to them There, oh, that'll be fine. Yeah, that's, that, that's, that's the great, thank you. A little bit of loss won't matter. Thank you. So we can do a lot with the sediment. Um, first of all, you look at its composition, work out, you know, uh, if there's any quartz in it or calcareous sediments, and out here it would be almost it would be pretty much 100% calcareous. Uh, we can do sieving, uh, put it through a, a grain sizer, so you can split it into its gravel, sand, and mud fraction, and that's we do that all over Australia. Yeah, we have, we have, yeah, we have hundreds, or if not thousands, Th thousands of samples in fact, yeah. all over Australia and they're split into this grain size fraction. Really useful as a, as a great uh, way of just describing how muddy or how gravelly sediments, uh, marine sediments are. Uh, and then you can do lots of other things uh, with that. You can look for any marine life in the, in the muds and sands that are brought up. Uh, yeah, so taking a, a sediment sample at every one of our ROV sites is pretty important and it goes into this great big sediment database called Mars. Mars the marine sediment database called Mars, which we uh, maintain at Geoscience Australia. That's right, and, and it's publicly accessible yep. and very, very useful. We've got a little website called ozseabed.gov.au, you can go and find all that information. I, I do love these this sculpted rock, you know, it just... Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? It's a, yeah, a little cave. Fluted limestone surfaces. 
pareceu que yeah, this view is looking less like boulders, landslide, isn't it? More in situ. Except that some of the previous dives, the boulders were so big. Yeah. You know, like you had to, you had to spend really some time back. on them yeah. to to realise just how big they were. But they were, in fact, just large blocks. It slid down. So, so while this might look like bedrock as part of the seafloor, it could just be simply one large mm. uh, boulder. Yeah, it's getting your head around the scale of these things is, it takes a bit of getting yep. used to. Seems like a bit of sediment in the water. Yeah, think? the marine snow is interesting, eh? It looks a bit higher than elsewhere. As deeper water sites we've been to, this is yeah, quite a level up in concentration. It looks yeah. at this. So we're tracking along in a direction which is taking us to the southeast. From the northwest to the southeast is our direction of the dive. So we'll come off that higher block down to more of what appears to be flat, but it's gently, gently sloping up. 310 meters right now, but gently sloping up. Have we started the transit? Scott? No, we haven't started the 500. That'll okay. We're not even at waypoint one. We're not even at waypoint one. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, right. <laughs> so you want us to bump the transect back 100 meters because we started so far up? We could do that's that. Fine. Yeah, no, that's fine, Alex. Okay, we'll yeah. do that. I'll put it at waypoint one. All right. Yeah. Right. Yep. We may not get to our last waypoint with uh, the ship up against the reef. Yeah, we have the scope to change things once we're down here. Like we we plan this ahead of time, uh, but you know we can we can modify. But we we do have to try and maintain this 500 meter transect uh, as much as possible. But we have a fair bit of time today to have a roam around uh, afterwards. Yep, definitely. Although we do stop for Nautilus, I believe. No, I know where we from Cape Transect. Oh, we do. Oh, we no, we won't. And octopus. <laughs> and dumb octopus. And pygmy seagulls. There was something else to stop for us. <laughs> <laughs> there was a third thing that we had. Dumbo octopus. Yeah. Uh, everyone stops with dumbos. I suppose. Being that we will maintain a 500 meter. Sorry, Transic? Chief Scientist has spoken. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. Right, the so teeth is starting to break down. <laughs> <laughs> <A little bit. laughs> I'm going to go to the next one. 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 I
don't care if it does change with them as you begin. Pretty consistent view now, Rob, isn't it? Mm. It's a uh, gravelly sand bed. Yeah. But we know the There's fish coming up. Oh, the... fish coming up. Yeah. Okay. And a few here on the left. Yeah. So we're on the transect now? Not no, quite. not quite. Okay. We're, we're just okay. right. getting Pretty to it. Right, yeah. So last chance for Nautilus. Uh, <laughs> Where are we? We have. We, you know, we saw them on pretty much every dive back in May, June. Okay, copy that. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> So the best thing is that you entire thing. Yeah. We'll make it through here. Yeah. So good invite. Thank you, sir. Almost like that. Here, how's this about? Kit Kats, huh? So we're just sharing around the chocolate in the control room here. There's plenty of snacks here. Yeah, too much food. Yeah, too much food. Get rid of that quick. I'm intrigued that we're getting these bed, bed forms at 300 metres down. Yeah, it's interesting. They're telling us there's a, a near seabed current without any question. Like this is such a really big bank, uh -huh. you know, all the water that moves past it from the South Equatorial Current, it, right. it sweeps around the edges yeah. and probably, you know, concentrated against the sides where we are now. Because you can get currents at all depths, e even in the deepest parts of the oceans, we see uh, bed forms or dunes, yeah. you know, several, th several thousand metres down on the seafloor. Um, you know, there's currents at all different depths. Fish. Lots of rubble, Scott. A lot of debris, yep, yep, yeah. yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. It's you can only surmise it's come off the reef edge. Just tumbled down, Coming down the slope, you think? Although if it's a rotolith algal growth as well, that can happen on in situ like this, can't it? Yeah, so, yeah, okay. Okay. so uh, yeah, the sort of depths that we've seen those rotolith Maybe it's a bit deep there. Earlier, it's were, still a bit deep. Yeah, probably yeah. around that sort of 80 to 100 metres, yeah. weren't they? Yeah, I'm more inclined to think this, this is just coral rubble. Yep. Just, you know, yep. just eroded and, yeah. you know, it'd still be a fair bit of bio erosion, could break these down, but they, uh, I just think we, we've got a surface of rubble here, coral, yes. you know, it would be shallow water corals originally and have just rolled down slope. Mm. Bridger, I'll leave the touch. Have you, uh, just a touch faster? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. 
Stand by, Alex. Ready. <laughs> Two meters. Okay, we've just started our 500 meter standardized transect along this ROV dive this afternoon, so we will maintain a steady height and speed above the seabed as Rob explained earlier just to collect these consistent uh, photos at consistent scale we can do our measurements from and we're using a program called Squiddle which allows us to look at each one of these five second photos that are taken as we're cruising along the, and then each photo is scored with uh, uh, with the different biota we see so you can click on a different each different parts of the image and it leaves a little round circle and then you attach the the biota name the animal name that you, you see and so from that we can build up a, a score of the, the the collections of the different and the different assemblages of animals as you go say from soft sediment into hard rock environment back into soft sediment and by doing it at 500 meters and we can compare it against all the other rov transects that we've done uh, so it helps us to understand i guess more systematically the differences or the trends between the different depth zones okay. and the different habitats and we're generally going up slope here, Scott. Yeah, uh, general trend up. Yeah, but we'll have a few bumps and hollows like right now as we drop off a mini, mini scarp, maybe. Hmm. This looks like stylastered on the a little delicate white. Yeah, it's just a gentle colony. Too crazy, I'm hoping. <laughs> yeah. So our uh, altimeter is located in the middle of the vehicle. So as it come up, it will seem like we're high, and then it'll come over and then yeah. drop down. Yeah. 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 Yeah, water's gonna be. Looks like we're losing our sand there, Scott. Yeah, we've it's lost the correct. Just white balancing our cameras there. Looks pink again. It's gone red again. <laughs> Is it too bright? No, that's actually pretty good. It's pretty good? Yeah. Heavy with the color and brightness? Okay, great. <laughs> that's a nice view right now. They're really. Get a camera under the ocean. Get the sense of it, a, a block and there are areas around it which yeah. are. That it's. Yeah. This looks like a lethrinid to me. If any, the fish, any you mean? fish people watching, let us know if, what, what fish family this might be. Yeah. 
back into the sand again. It's mostly hard though, and it's hard with rubble so with we'll a, a little bit of sand as a as a veneer over the top. We weren't even able we weren't able to put our push core into it. Uh, it just hit rock directly under the sand. Okay, I'm I'm saying that this, uh, the current is going from left to right. You see how it leaves Yeah, this? nice, pro we, nice we call. We call these comet tails, right? Exactly, so you often yeah. see this even in the deeper waters where you have a, a hard feature, a rock or even a mound, and, oh. and the currents come along and they leave like this tail in the leeward side. So that would suggest the currents are moving from left to right here. Well spotted, yeah, nice. And, and kind of makes sense because the direction we're headed in uh, to the corner of this big reef, we think most of the currents are sweeping along that, that northern side of the reef from east to west, which from this angle would actually pass from left to right across the screen. And, and so the, these comet tails left behind, you know, on the sides of these rocks is, is just confirming what we what we think's happening with the currents anyway. Okay, Looney's saying click tranthias. So these are the anthias, deep water anthias. So not a left right edge at all. Thing is, though, if he has to keep coming down this way, then he'll lose speed. But if we leave a train set over here, off like this. Are you set on these waypoints exactly? I can go alongside. If we just follow right behind him, yeah. then he doesn't have to kind of do this. Okay. It makes the train set quite nice. So the only thing we would kind of be. The lines like this, we just kind of deep it. Do a bit of that, yeah. And then yeah, we'll okay. just keep it straight all the way. That, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. It's the same direction, more or less. So. That's right. Yeah. So Adam's just talking about the this uh, this dance we do between the Falcor and Sebastian. The uh, the ship is ahead of us, so Sebastian's just following behind, but we have to keep close to each other so the the line doesn't get too tight. And when we do these 500 meter transects, both the ship and the Sebastian have to work really closely together to um, to maintain this this steady progress across the sea floor. Yeah, the uh, Falcor actually goes into DP mode or dynamic positioning mode for these transit, which allows it to use uh, extra thrusters, really, forward thrusters included to really control its motion. So we're currently travelling at uh, speed over ground for the ship is averaging 0 0.2, 0 0.3 metres a second. ROV, 0.2 metres a second at the moment. So the ship's just sped up a fraction. And we are heading shallower and shallower water. We're basically tracking directly towards the reef. Is this an emergent reef, Rob, in any places? I haven't had a chance to get outside today. And 
Uh, yeah. Have a look. Yeah, it's okay. definitely in places. So there so are br- breaking think, waves, yep. Yeah, yep. think yep. of it like the, the rim of a bathtub. You, you can definitely see the, the shallow coral reef around the edges. It's also got lots and lots of pinnacles in the inside lagoon. Okay. Um, but, uh, you know, fishing vessels, pleasure vessels come out here to, uh, to dive, go scuba diving and, and fishing in places. So, uh, yeah, there's, there's plenty of shallow coral reef around here. Right, yeah. Navigation hazards. Yep. There's no known shipwrecks. Okay. Diamond islets, Trigos reefs. That's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> Despite its size, yeah. it's huge. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no no wrecks recorded here, as far as I'm aware. So our fish people get a closer look at this one coming up. So they're saying grammatic, grammatic. A notice. It looks like an anthea, but not in the same family. I'm pretty sure that's fish that uh, we've seen fairly regularly in these depths uh, on, other, on previous ROV dives. James Reimer joining us from the Ryukus in Japan. Welcome aboard, James. Uh, we're going to get up into the shallows today, so we're heading up into the, uh, we're in the lower mesophotic zone now. Uh, we've just started our 500 meter transect and we're working up into the shallows. Uh, we've got plenty of time this afternoon. So once we've finished our, our transect, we'll be able to wander around, have a uh, closer look. I'm, clean, I'm keen to have a look into these these caves and things we're seeing on the sides of these boulders. See what marine life is living in them. Uh, but we'll get right up into the, the sh- uh, shallow and mesophotic zone today uh, with the aim to uh, collect uh, black corals and shallow water corals for some of our other colleagues ashore like Tom Bridge at the Museum of Tropical Queensland. Uh, also any interesting sponges like carnivorous sponges for Merrick Eakins at the uh, Queensland Museum in Brisbane and we're also collecting soft corals for other colleagues ashore. Yeah, coming that way. No, no, but I have. Sorry, no, I see some out of the attract, but that way. Yep. Sorry, I'm drifting the other side. Okay. Change a little bit. Okay. Tide. Oh, the current's changed a little bit. That's what I'm saying. We're stronger? Uh, I just changed the direction. Okay. Tide, tide shift. Was it, uh, was it just the slack water or is it? I think it was <coughs> about slack when we started. Yeah, so it's when it's flooding it em- or ebbing, I don't know. 
can have a quick look. I'm not going to have a quick look. Just for a second. Some time. That would tell you. In places, yeah, yeah. So, continuing up our gradual, gentle slope, we're on the edge of Tregrose Reef, 302 metres. Temperature hasn't changed at all really since we started the dive, 16.4 Celsius. And there's the uh, perspective view of our dive this afternoon. We'll run up along that gradual slope, then hit a steeper climb about two thirds of the way in, where we expect to see perhaps some more in situ limestone rock in those caves that. Rob's been keen to see. So, until then, there remains a gravelly, sandy seabed with all the gravel made up of fragments of limestone, perhaps a combination of rotoliths and other reef fragments which have tumbled down the slope. And isolated small soft corals for the most part. What we're not seeing here in contrast to some of our other dyes so far, we're not seeing a lot of burrowing or bioturbation in these in these sediments. And that's probably a function of the, the fact we've just got a thin veneer of sand and that sand is an active layer we've seen a lot pretty clear evidence of small ripples, these comet marks that were described earlier on, a couple coming into view where you have small piles of sand in the leeward side of a rock, all indicative of regular sediment transport. So any bioturbation activity will be quickly obliterated by that process if there are organisms trying to do that anyway, and it may not be the case here.
So you've adjusted to that current, have you, Adam? Yeah. Yeah, right. Okay. A little bit of a dog leg on our track. And we are still on our 500 meter transect. Where we maintain a constant speed and elevation above the seabed just to give us those standardized sets of seabed photos for our quantitative work. After which we'll have a chance to do a bit more exploring and sampling and closer views of the Benthos. Here's another one of these nice examples of these comet marks. It's coming into your view right now in the middle of the screen. We have that, that large cobble boulder with a distinct accumulation of sand on the right hand side or the down drift down current side that's a good way to read the currents in fact as they shape the seabed okay who what are these fish <laughs> little school Thoroughby Bridge. Thoroughby Bridge. Yeah, go ahead, Luke. Yeah, and I'm going to break heading around probably at least 10 degrees to the floor. Okay. The surface currents are picking up, so just to let you know. Okay. Sounds good. We'll just keep following you. Okay, thanks. Welcome back, Rob. You just took a quick break. Do a bit of homework, I think. Yeah, a bit of <laughs> coffee. Top the coffee up. Yeah, yeah um, hey, what's we don't have very big tides out here, but we've just gone high water, so it's okay. now ebbing, and, and we will expect uh, a little bit of a, a tidal stream, but it isn't very uh, strong between now and I think right. nine o'clock. It's about about 0.5 of a meter drop. At, uh, so all the, these all things have to be taken into account planning these dives. But as we discovered yesterday, Scott, it was it was the East Australian current that beat us. It was, Rob. We had, a, uh, in case you might have been wondering what happened to us yesterday, we did have a, a dive planned in the Noggin Canyon system back on the Great Barrier Reef margin. We got to the site and uh, looked at the the current meter profile, which we can measure from the from the vessel here. And it was picking up um, currents which were running at one and a half knots down to 200 meters water depth. Uh, and that was assessed as far too dangerous for the ROV, particularly during the deployment and recovery phase of the ROV back on deck, uh, with the ROV having to fight that strong current. So we canceled that operation. And what we learned there, well, it was went to our maps and reminded ourselves that we were sitting in the edge of the East Australian current, which is a, we knew it was there, of course, but didn't 
it's not until we were in it to, to measure the current speeds and relate them to the, mm, the operation. It was. Yeah, yeah. So we went to another site. We thought <laughs> this might this might work. We went a little bit further out into what's called the Queensland Trough, which is the deep basin that runs along the edge of the Great Barrier Reef. We went to a site that we've investigated some previous expeditions, a place called the Glory and Olds, which is a, a, the remains of a very large undersea landslide. And these were the uh, the tops of great huge debris boulders, so big that they uh, they form their own underwater hills. And uh, they, you know, they they're very well mapped. Oh, some bed forms. Ah, oh, yeah, up come up, good, good, good. Yeah. Uh, and so we thought, yeah, we we'll, this might work because it was in well over a thousand meters depth. But even Again. there, the East Australian current was too strong, yeah. and uh, we had to abort that dive too. So it was just one thing after another. We thought, oh, okay, well, let's just let's just head straight out into the Coral Sea and we had a big transit, it was yeah. about 200 nautical mile transit last That's night. right it was, yep. But now we're here and we've got Very some variety right now, we've got some really interesting sedimentary bed forms, evenly spaced, they look very symmetrical in that they have a, a regular shape in cross section with ripples and better superimposed over, over, on top. Printing, over printing ripples exactly yeah, yeah. so different you got you know two scale different scale bed forms here mm. you could almost uh, i don't know would you call them dunes scott the bigger ones uh, the... we're getting that way yeah there's, okay there's our laser pointers on the ground they're 10 centimeters apart so these uh these dunes have a wavelength of maybe half a meter yeah we're up there so wavelength being the, the distance uh, between the crests of each dune, we'll call them dunes. Yeah, with smaller, finer scale ripples on top. Yeah. So that would need some decent current uh, to reckon, create them. For sure thing, yeah. In these sands. So... And a sustained current, that's the other thing, to organise the sediment to create these little little piles. You need a sustained energetic current to do this. But it's still just a veneer, I reckon, because between the mm. ripple crests, we've got a lot of gravel, mm, little yeah. cobbles. Yeah, this wouldn't be one great big pile of sediment, would it? No. It's just like a thin, a thin yeah, veneer. A veneer. Yeah. And it's been shaped over, a, well, I'd say a hard limestone substrate. Yeah. Lots of right. boulder, cobble, rubble that's rolled down from the, the shallow coral reef that's mm. close. It's not far from where we are, so we're going up the steeper flanks of uh, this larger diamond island. Chagos reefs or diamond islets are all part of the same big atoll. It's about 100 kilometres long, this atoll. Um, it adjoins another atoll called Lehau Reef, and both diamond islets and Lehau Reef are in the top 20 largest atolls in the world. Pond is here, it's quite good for the distance. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But he may have harder time laddering up there. Yeah. This, so, okay. Uh, Let's do our best. Yeah, whatever adjustment you need to make. Are, are you happy with it to, to change that transect? Just, to, we'll just keep following him until the transect's over and then we'll see what he can do in this direction. Okay. I think, I think yeah. if we try to bring him this way now, we're going to have to slow him. He's going to he's gonna struggle to go this way, which will slow the transect right now. Right, okay, okay. At least. Uh, if we can just do this until we get to that point, at yep. that point then we can okay. move slowly, but we'll be sampling so we can stop and let him get ahead and okay. kind yep. of yep. maximize them. Yep. Yeah, that's, thank you. Yeah, that's great. We're still getting a 500. Yeah, we just, we're just, uh, the, the Falcor is actually having to move around. As we get closer to the reef, uh, the Falcor is just having to sort of change its position a little bit. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So we've got lots of tools to help us navigate here. Uh, of course, there's this wonderful uh, 
navigation line, we can see in full 3D exactly where the, but the ship is and where the, the Sebastian is. We also have a forward-looking sonar uh, on, the, on the Sebastian, so that's one of the images. Uh, we can actually, it scans backwards and forwards. Uh, sometimes we put it up as an inset, we might be able to show you a bit later, but it, it shows, yeah, it's using sound eyes. rather than light, you know, like vision to look at, scan ahead. So even in the murkiest waters, the sonar will continue to work. And it's quite a really, it's quite a good yep. picture, isn't it? We're getting this, mm. the ripples, so we can actually see beyond what the vision is using the, this forward-looking sonar, and you can see multiple uh, ripples in the sonar. Yes, yeah, nice. So we're going to have to maybe just calculate your transect based on the way we're moving just because we kind of got to follow him because he's struggling to hold position. So we'll just give you a kind of guesstimate of where 500 is. Cool. Very nice ripples. Very well organised now. Yeah. Yeah. Very cement. Evenly spaced. Steady current. Just going to have to pause a little minute here because we're coming into the okay. 50, so right. we'll let him get his heading in. You might need to pause, Alex. I don't know. <clears throat> We're just organising the uh, positioning of the Falcor in relation to the um, Sebastian. So we're just uh, just holding steady here until things get organised on, on the surface here. So, is the ship going to continue sliding southeast? It's gone. Northeast, actually. <laughs> northeast, yeah. At this okay. point, we're just pause the transect. We'll have to. We have, yeah. We can't have him coming down on top of us. So. Yeah, yeah, okay. So we're running backwards right now, actually. Yeah. 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 So just repositioning, uh, we were getting a bit too close, well the Sebastian was getting a little too close underneath the Falcor, so we're just moving further away uh, as, the, as the ship manoeuvres itself. Here we go. 
a figure eight. Vid, can you just put the, so the forward-looking sonar up as an inset, just to sure. just to show the uh, the, the big horns? <laughs> so we're still uh, repositioning the ship in in relation to the Sebastian. Just showing you the uh, an inset here of the forward-looking sonar that's on top that's in the Sebastian. So we've got this running all the time. It helps us find large boulders and things a lot further beyond the, the limit of the vision, not beyond the camera camera lights. But see all these stripes, these are, these are bed forms that are scanning way out around us. Uh, you can see quite clearly the sonar is picking up the edges or the ridges of each one of those dunes. So that we're, we're right in the middle of a big dune field uh, and of course the the sonar just allow, it gives us that bigger picture uh, in really low visibility. If this was murky water, uh, the sonar is what helps us navigate in that darkness. Thanks for it. Look at the ripples here. Yeah. Lots of shape. Undoubtedly. Being in the seafloor mapping game, <laughs> Scott, I love <laughs> looking at bed forms. The geometry yeah. is really appealing. Yeah, yeah. 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 the yeah. shapes and patterns are left yeah. on the seafloor by currents. Yeah. Even today, uh, Nelson from CSIRO, the, he's part of the geophysical survey mapping team at CSIRO, he's actually on board as part of the multi-beam mapping team here on the Falcor and he was showing us some uh, dunes that they'd mapped uh, on the RV Investigator which is Australia's largest blue water research ship and uh, they've got an excellent mapping team on there and they go to all sorts of different parts of Australia but mm. yeah, the, the dunes that Nelson was showing were pretty amazing. Yeah. You know, that, that sharp, the sharp crest, you can tell exactly that they're and yeah, just yeah, recent. give us a couple more minutes to, to work out a heading and then we can start uh, going down the line again. No worries, we're feeling your crap as well, so okay. Thanks. Thanks. So I've just landed the uh, Sebastian on the seabed briefly. Might as well look at, look at what we've got here. Hmm, I'm seeing Halameda. Halameda. <laughs> yep. Yeah, Halameda. Flakes, flakes thereof. These are these sort of all dead cornflake style flakes. They're about the size of your thumbnail and they're made by calcareous algae called Halameda. Now they wouldn't grow down here, uh, only grow in the shallow waters where it's sunlit because they photosynthesize. But they're They've got a limestone structure, and when they die, they they basically roll down into these deeper depths. Ah, oh, sure. 
see it. Let's have a look. Down in the detail yeah, there. Yeah, look at that. Different things in here. Yep. Oh, and that's the dry zone, bits of coral. Things uh, moving around are due to the ROV, I expect. Mm. Yeah, I'm seeing shell, I'm seeing gastropods. Yep. Uh, it, it, it'd be a mix here. Mm. It's a coral debris, yeah, definitely mollusk, right, right in the middle. Is it, that's a yep. gas, broken gastropod, just there. Yep. A bivalve, maybe. Bivalve, maybe. There's a gastropod up here. Yeah, but most, mostly yeah. it looks halameda. Yeah. But quite a quite a mix of different things. And this is all material that's just full. Okay, we've got Jeremy back, so we're going to have a full down slope. So just look to the left a little bit. There we go. Yeah. Look at that. Oh yeah, we want that. He <laughs> wants that. Good timing, Jeremy. Whereas we we have been forced to interrupt our transit. Unfortunate. By ship operations, but that's okay. Let's take a. We'll make use of the time. It's pretty small. Oops. Yeah. Uh, and it's probably attached to a little rock. So we'll just Sorry. I'll just get a better position. Oh, yeah. So we've collected, I think, two of these. And each time we find this, it's small. It looks like a deep sea species, but it's Probably often found in the shallows here, like around 300. Um, so it has alternating pinules. Oh, it can't get closer. No, that's it. Yeah. Hmm. Can we just pick it up and bring it to ourselves? Yeah. Sure, try that. Oh, good idea. So if this is what I think it is, um, it's a very shallow water schizopathic. Um, it's got alternating pinules, so it'd be alternatopathies. But it's just so shallow that you have to think it's something different. But you uh, mean you, this typically it's in shallow waters and this is deep, or the other way around? The way around. So this usually you found over a thousand meters deep. Yeah, you want it? Um, yeah. yeah. So we'll, yeah, we'll pick it up, bring it closer to our face, just no, no, take a zoom saying, in. Um, Chris has asked if we want to take a core here in this sediment while we're part. We could try in the bed forms. Yeah. I'm going to zoom in. But I doubt we'll retain it. That'd be nice. Yeah. It's very small, huh? Tiny. So yeah, it's really small. Um, we, had a, we would have never seen it if we didn't yeah. happen to stop right on top of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but this is, I mean, it looks like a black coral. Mm -hmm. and if it is, it's just so shallow. What about the base here, Jeremy? Is it is it growing on a shell, a tiny little piece of shell? Maybe. If, if that's what it's growing on, then yeah, we'll, we'll see, I guess. Maybe, yeah, just give it a go, I guess. Sorry. It's, God, it's tiny. Yeah, you're going to clamp it, but really no way around it, is there? Oh yeah, it looks like a black corn. You can see it's got its six tentacles. Would this be the smallest? Black coral, you've <laughs> <laughs> <We> sampled <laughs> potentially. Uh, oh, yeah. But the other ones that we collected, like this, were similarly small. I mean, this might be a 10, I don't know, 10 centimeters, maybe. Yep, height super small. Um, yeah, I'll try to zoom in. So, yeah, you know what else is interesting is the tentacles seem to be very far apart. So those top three pairs of tentacles is one polyp. So they're fairly part, far apart. So that would, in, that would suggest it is a deep species, a deep sea coral, you know, in the family, the Schizopathidae. Mm. So, all right, let's bridge. throw it in bio box yeah, go ahead. 1A. Yeah, I'll start to move ahead again slowly. Okay. Well, there's not gonna be a magical heading today, so we may have to adjust, but we'll keep you informed. Right. You just go where you need to go, and we're going to follow you. Great, <laughs> thanks. Good 
Oh, on future trips, we need a pair of tweezers like attached to the part of the arm. Mm. Okay, yeah, but some of those black corals yeah, have been said, huge, yeah. Jeremy. You know, yeah. you need to clamp the speed to pull some of those out. They're Absolutely, be massive. Yeah, you know, well yes. over a meter long. Yeah, my, you need a suite of arms. Absolutely. Oh, um, oh, which is the Yeah, it's, it's there, yeah. It's there, yeah. Not really popped up. Is the current strong? Yeah, really strong. It might be hard to get the small coral in. To drop. Oh, uh, it's, away. it's right there. Oh, yeah. no, went off. I it's right gonna... between, it's right next to one, two, one. To the right. Yeah, we won't be able to get the arm in there. It looks yeah. like it filled in. in. Or at least trying to get the the one that we already collected. All right. Oh, I see. We'll find another one. Mm. It may. Yeah, the currents come right across. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We might be lucky. You might hang on to the. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, we had it for a second. Oh, tricky. Uh, maybe I'll just close the box. Yeah, like the, the bottom of it. It's already yeah. sticking out the bottom end. We'll probably clamp it. The hinge will hold it. Yeah. Well, it would. If, if you can pull it out, it's better to get it in the box if it's possible. It's just where it is right now. It's trying to get it that hit done. Yeah. There you go. Hello. Did you want the core or just get back in transit? Let's get back on. Yeah. 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 Say the seed. Alright, that one's back yeah. in. If you can fly backwards real fast, I might fly out and I can grab it. You won't get into the car, it's going out. Okay. Okay, so basically you're basically left off right there. You can see where you left off right here. Yeah. So what's my second parallel? Just north of it. Right here is where I left off. Yes, yeah, so we've got um. Go ahead. Adam and Chris on uh, ROV controls, and uh, we've got the ship where we need uh, Falco to be. We're going to try and resume our 500 meter transect, uh, and then we will have a bit more scope then to wander around and, and, uh, and look for corals and other animals. So all these rocks that are popping out amongst the dunes and ripples are coral pieces, uh, coral rubble. Uh, we're on the, the steeper flanks of uh, Diamond Islets Reef or Turagos Reef. Uh, they, they got this same name, but it's one large one large atoll. Uh, it's about a hundred kilometers long at its longest distance and about 50 kilometers wide. So very, very large uh, coral atoll. And we're at the very northwestern tip of it, going up the steeper flanks. So we started around 300 meters deep and we're going to go up as shallow as we can possibly do safely. Area 
Space Aerial scanning sonar, still showing a lot of the big forms. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Out from the limit of the vision that we can see in the cameras. Big dunes with uh, ripples superimposed over the top. Just says to us there's, there must be some decent currents that come through here to, um, to shape the, the seabed like this. And there's an uh, inset of the scanning sonar up on the on the uh, picture here, and you can see all these lines. These are the, the crests of the dunes around us, and the scanning sonar is scanning across the seafloor on that arc, probably about uh, uh, 70 degrees either side of the, uh, perhaps 80 degrees either side of the Sebastian. So even if it was really, really murky and the water was so clouded with sediment we could still navigate and uh, you know look for features that might be a hazard to the Sebastian. Uh, we also use it to help us guide uh, us towards large rocks if we see large rocks in the sc scanning sonar we we can drive towards them to see what's attached to the rocks. There's no living halometer down at this depth. Um, the deepest we've found halometer is around about the 100 meter mark in really clear waters. They, they photosynthesize, so they need to be up in that photic zone. So any halometer that we see down here on the seafloor is just simply uh, dead flakes that have broken off and rolled down slope. Uh, they still form an important part of the, the seabed sediment, but uh, it wouldn't be living halometer down here. So I guess one of the features of these bed forms we have strong currents is you don't get a lot of mud. It's obvious that the, that finer grain material gets winnowed out and blown away, doesn't it? Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, well, well sorted is what we call this. Yeah. Very well sorted. 
There are a few of these. Ah, they're like, the first burrows I've yeah, seen. Yeah, a few <laughs> burrows. I was about to say, when you have yeah. high bed forms, you don't see a lot of this uh, Lebensperm and the, the, yeah. the traces of trace fossils of well, trace traces of animals crawling across the seafloor or burrows. But you know there are the odd burrow popping out. But we're not seeing any sea cucumbers, no, which, no. which are like mud. You know they typically like that muddy environment and on the, the side of the Great Barrier Reef margin where it was much more muddy there were lots of echinoderms and mm. sea cucumbers and I wouldn't uh, expect those at all chins and the like yeah. but not a lot of life here and you know not a lot of attached life but certainly enough current strength to really shape the seafloor yeah It's a very regular pattern. We've still got a ways to go, haven't we? It's oh, like yeah. <laughs> 291 we metres. We're going to get right up in 200 metres if we can. We're still just. Slowly Making our way ascending. up this gradual slope. And there's the control room. That's me. Hey. That's me. <laughs> and this is Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Next to him we've got Six Adam. Seven. And then Chris. And John backing up. And we've got Ben just come in the control room. I think they might be uh, about to do handovers here. A solitary something coming up. Yeah, it doesn't show up really well in the sonar, does it? No. These little uh, things that pop out. Something living on it. So I, yeah? Mm. Maybe one of these zoanthids that sort of just colonise. But now it has moved out of that bed form zone. I've got a yeah. planar bed now. Okay. It yeah, just it ends, ends abruptly. That's... We've come up a fraction in depth. Yeah, okay, so James is looking and uh, he's probably, he's, he'd be very interested in zoanthids. And we have found this where zoanthids colonize older animal stalks and... Yeah, okay. We're still so we're on, our, we're on our five, five, we're on our five hundred transactions. Sorry, we a little frustrating, stop. perhaps. I don't. Do you want to put a marker down? Uh, yeah. or do yeah. How far in are we, Alex? Do you think? Uh, Only another forty. Oh, we'll come back then. Okay. We'll, we'll finish our line and then shoot back. Here. If there's, there we seem to be seeing a few of these mm. in this right vicinity. So we're, yeah. So, yeah, soon we'll be finishing this transect soon and then we'll stand have, by. be able to stop and have a bit of a closer look at some of these animals. There's another one. Yeah, there's a few. There's Tregrose Reef from a distance as we zoom in on our 3D view. Mm. We're travelling east in this 3D view right now as a little fly through. And we're right on this corner. This is the northwest corner that we're we're running up. You can see just the, the sheer size of this atoll. Uh, it's a hundred kilometers long uh, at its <laughs> at its longest. 
and about 50 kilometres wide at, it, at its fattest. So uh, you could just make out the the little white line. That's the that's us. That's us. <laughs> that's the transect so far, and the uh, sort of orangey line. That's actually our planned track. And most of what we've gone over so far has been. Uh, uh, bed forms, you know, sand. Yeah, yeah. We're, just start, we're not far from the break in slope or increase in slope. Yeah, okay. And so we might get a transition soon enough. Don't even worry about the east corner where you have to go with the heading. If the ship can do it. Yeah, we're right at the base of it, so maybe another 50 metres or so and it would start going up. But we aren't, we aren't in a great rush to go up. We've got, we got plenty of time this afternoon to have a look around. Yep. But I put a marker there, that's where that's on. Where the what? Is this the lamp that you guys said that you used? Yeah, so, thank you. All right, so I put a marker there for you. So yeah, okay, thank you. There. Thanks, Chris. Small burrows are appearing here. Yeah. Yeah, regular burrows. We see these fairly often. We sure do. But we do not know what causes them. All right. So uh, are we allowed to do a zoom in here? Or we're still on transects? Still on transects. Okay. Yeah. We'll get a closer look at these eventually. <laughs> James is betting 10 yen. How much is that, James? Octocoral is that like a dollar Australian? Or? No, it's like 10 cents Australian. <laughs> <laughs> I think you better, I think you better need to put a bit more money on there than that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, all right. We need a little bit more confidence from you there, James. But they're very similar, aren't they? They have this sort of um, bare patch at the bottom. Yeah, so we definitely need to have a closer look at those. A break in a second. <laughs> 20. Big spend. Twenty cents. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ten meters to go on our transect. And there's one of those things. Yeah, all right. As soon as we stop here, we'll uh, have a bit of a look around. Did you want to try and get a sediment? Let's take, yeah, we shall. Yeah, because we're not far from that breaking slope, I reckon. So, let's see what it's like here. The core will be hard to retain. Yeah, it looks, um, it looks a little very, coarse, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, but still, we can do a scoop. We've only got one so far, so we've got another. Right, we'll call that, right? Thank you, Cody. Transit. End of transect. Lock that in. Thank you, Alex. And we'll go exploring. We want to do a quarter right here. We'll do a little scoop, call, whatever we can manage, mate. And then look at that. Uh, oh, what's that? It's interesting. Yeah, I know. That's a You only got one core, right? Yeah, I've only one so far. It's, uh, it's more of a scrape. Number, number two. Uh, 
down a little bit. Thanks, I'll take a break shortly. That's where you... What is this? I know. Is it a... From here it looks like a sand dollar, but I'm... Yeah, it looks like a little... Like a flat. Echinoid. Oh, that's going in much easier than the other one. It is. Thicker... Thicker sediment, but I'll... Be surprised if I retain it. Take that, thank you. Yeah, look at that. It's just, <clears throat> I has it just a fine to coarse calcareous sand. That's what you're right, well, Rob. Well yeah. sorted. And a very disturbed core, but that does not matter. We shall take that as a bulk sample, we'll call that. Yeah. Tap, tap, tap. So we just had a crew changeover. We've got uh, uh, Ben and Cody, ROV pilots, assisted by John on the audio vision controls. Okay. You want to do another one? Or? No, thanks. We'll just uh, have a look at that. Uh, what are we calling it? There's a, oh, there's, a, there's a little sand dollary thing nearby too. Looks like it. Yeah, yeah oh, that's yeah, a little sand dollar. It is a sand dollar. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Got it right. Yeah, yeah. Of course, you find these well, similar ones on beaches. Like the Halometer hat. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So think of a, and it's alive. You can actually see it's. That's my next question. Yep. You can see yeah. all its, uh, its legs, hyd hydraulically powered. Thanks very much, Alex. Thanks. And uh, it's moving slowly across the seafloor. Uh, in fact, it's moving towards us. You see how it's almost bulldozing the, the halometer flakes very, very slowly. They leave a slime trail quite often. If you look at them... It's moving now. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's so now. it's bulldozing them in front. They do have very, very fine spines. Quite regularly on beaches, these are under the sand. They just have a very thin coating of sand. And one of the really cool things you can do if you've, um, if you like capture these, is to take them in some sand, uh, like in a dish, and just leave them there with water on them, of course, because they they need to be under underwater to survive. And you'll see them slowly bury themselves in the sand. Lots of halometer flakes here. Yeah. Yeah, it's good one. Oh, no. Yep. Yeah, thanks, uh, uh, Cody. We need to find one of those stalks. It's a decent size. Yeah, it's about um, well, nearly five centimeters across. Ahead. I think it's one ahead. Okay. Cody, just fly ahead to that little. So we're going to yeah, have a look at 
these zoanthids slash soft corals that we've seen sticking out. They seem to have this bare base and uh, and then a dark brown colony at the top. So we'll get a closer look at it. James is happy. Something in front of it too. Yeah. What would that be? Got a few burrows around too. Starting to kick in here. It looks soft coral like to me. This, these look like okay. um, harp jellies, like benthic, benthic tinafores on the seafloor in front of it. Ah, oh, yeah, that looks soft coral-like to me. Yeah, these look like um, just underneath it, those, those white things. That looks like a benthic tinafore. Focused all right? That's good. Just adjusting the light. Yeah. Yep. Looks like James lost his ten cents. Are we waiting for the position? Uh, we've moved. We're, we're exploring now. Oh, yeah. okay. So, yeah, we're this yeah, yeah, it's a soft position. Uh, we've seen a lot of these on this dive, right? No, just kicked in now. Just la the last um, 20 minutes or so. Yeah. Um, we have collected one yet. Have we? Do you want? Grab it. Unless, are you guys in a rush to get up? No, yeah, no, no. you go for it. Um, okay, I'm just Kathy's just saying. A net feed? Mm. Does Kathy need one? Yeah, you grab it. Go, grab it. Yep. Yeah, yeah uh, Carolyn thinks it's a benthic tina four as well. Yeah, that's what it looks like to me. There's this white, there's this white mass just to oh, the okay. bottom yep, of yep, it. Yep, yep, yep. Can you just focus in on that, please, Scott? Rabbis. Yeah, just down on the ground. You usually see them attached to th things, and this just seems to be down on the seafloor itself. We've seen some really, really colourful ones of these. Don't know. What do you think? Squid eggs? Squid eggs, people are calling out. We got, we got squid eggs here. Squid uh, eggs. Squid eggs. <laughs> yeah, that's what uh, Demma said on Sunday. Yeah, okay. Interesting. Alright, we can grab the soft crop. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, we're going to grab this soft coral for Kathy, our collaborator, back on shore. We'll grab from the base, Jack. Yeah, please. <laughs> All right, Bridge. Yeah, go ahead, Eric. Just a current update for you. Uh, surface current is already 1.1, one one, getting uh, very, very fast already. 1.1 one one and growing, copying. Right. Jack, you got the it's not good. Oh, yeah, <laughs> oh wee, that's uh. Maybe we back I it. I think we shredded the base of that. That's the root system, isn't it? Holding up there. Because it's attached to the sand substrate. Uh, we're right? pretty or is much it a hard bottom? Uh, it, it increases a tiny bit more than. It's, it's not going to be doing like it. Okay. okay. I'll give you a Alright. I'll be It's the tide. It's still ebbing. It's ebbing. Where would you like to put it? Um, is one D open? One D sounds very good. When was the peak of the tide? Okay, I'm gonna work on About an hour, yeah. half an hour ago. Oh, shit. It's gonna be fun. So it's dropping, but it's not even much of a drop. It's half a meter. Yeah. There you go. So that's not much in terms of tidal range. 
maybe it's water, you know, or it's just oceanic currents, it's just strong at the moment. Yeah. But, What are they looking at? Can you see? A current. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. I guess over the far as great. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, and how fast did they come to town? Yeah, so we're just having a discussion here about uh, positioning of the ship in Sebastian uh, because we're dealing with some increasing currents that are sweeping along the edge of uh, this Diamond Islet, Trigos Reefs. But it's small. Yeah, that's right. We're just taking a precautionary approach, of course, with this. So we'll do, keep this going for as long as it is safe to do so. Mm. Okay, folks, in fact, we've just had to call it. Uh, the currents are not playing in our favour right now, so we're going to have to recover the ROV, unfortunately. Just for safety. Yeah, this is so we had this issue yesterday. Yeah. We couldn't even yeah. put it in the water because the currents were too strong. Uh, you have to remember that. The Sebastian's over four ton. Yeah. Uh, it's the size of a large car. Uh, it's it's quite a big beast to move around the ocean, and it can only push against so much current. Anything over about a knot, and it's it starts getting a bit tenuous. So yeah, it, it can overheat. 
as it fights the carrots as well. Yeah, and that's internally. So, so yeah, if it so. if it works too hard, it starts cooking the inside of it. You can imagine all the electronics inside the uh, inside the Sebastian. So um, we were we've been sort of watching the tidal stream increase as uh, as the dive progressed, and it's got to a point now where uh, it'll become risky to to keep the the, the dive going if the currents increase any stronger. So here we go. Okay. Yeah, it's real. Can we start coming up? Um, Ben's paying right now. We're at the pay on 335. Do you want us to hand over now? Sure. Uh, just give me just a second. Yeah, take your time. I'm still going to get in the position. Do you want to talk about what we've got planned over the next few days? Sure. So assuming we can <laughs> get in the water and the currents don't yeah, so kill us again. Tomorrow we'll be uh, starting off a bit earlier. Uh, we'll be still on to Gross Reef but around on the um, eastern corner of the reef system, still in a little bit of shelter from our prevailing south east right, winds which are building daily at the moment. So uh, we'll um, endeavour to deploy awesome. on that side. Similar water depth. No, it's, it's actually starting a little bit deeper, 500 metre kickoff. And we will be joined tomorrow by with... Um, by, by Dougal Lindsay from Japan again, who will start off with a pelagic midwater dive, looking at the, the jellyfish through that upper 400 metres or so. Yeah, so there's the perspective view right now, swinging around. You can see yeah, it's, it's, that's it's the northern view. So northern. we're going to be on the, the eastern side of that, that area. That area in red. But so that's dropping down. So. On the leeward side, are you looking north now across the, the reef? It mm. spins around. Yeah, so that's 100 kilometers long, that uh, atoll. Yeah, yeah. Now, if anyone joined us for the World Ocean Day dive back in June, we were at that very, that hook, that hook shape that's closest to us now. We were just on the uh, inside of that. Yeah, that's the current that's pulling that. The port. Okay, how much in the brick wall? Yeah. Alright, well, fingers crossed for tomorrow. Yep, it's gone. Indeed. But thanks everyone for joining us this afternoon. It's been a really interesting afternoon of seeing some quite active seabed dynamics. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not right now, it seems like I'm getting a headway. Not really great, yeah, that's negative. We'll keep the current thing. Okay, you're good with us from higher? So we'll be signing off now for the afternoon, everybody, and look forward to uh, having your company tomorrow from uh, around 8, 8 9 a.m. Australian time. Thank you. Yeah, okay. All right. Bye, everyone. Appreciate it.